right, welcome guys to another episode of Emancipated Human. This time um, I have my friend Danilo Cuellar and he has a show that is really popular and he writes, uh, he is an editor also for a couple of uh, Facebook pages. I guess you're an admin now or what is that uh, considered yeah. these days? So, content um, creator. Yeah. Content creator. And uh, you should check him out definitely. He has, uh, he's a very prolific writer and he has a uh, uh, a really awesome way to explain things. So what we're going to talk about today is marriage and the government. So before we go in there, just tell me a little bit, what is the definition, a clear definition of government? So, so the way I, I see it, simplified version of it, is a, a monopoly on violent aggression over a given geographical region. And, you know, which is funded through the stolen funds of taxation, as well as the belief in the myth of authority. That's that seems pretty legit. Now, who would take care of the poor? We were just talking about that before we started recording. So, like <laughs> yeah. people, you know, like watching this show, probably don't know. But uh, so, uh, you know, you we were talking about a minute ago about our moms being a little bit more into the. Um, warm and fuzziness of uh, the socialist government. So, like, you know, without this uh, precious government, who would take care of poor people? Well, I think that um, is, first of all, assuming that the government is already taking care of poor people, <laughs> which is a dangerous assumption because, of course, any, um, um, most, if not all, of the, the action of government um, achieves the exact opposite. So um, by the time that the war on poverty began, um, I think it was the Great Society, right? President Lyndon Johnson. Yeah. Um, the poverty level was declining quite, um, you know, considerably. And then once that was um, enacted and, you know, all the legislation around it, you see, you know, you look on a graph and it just goes rising, 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 and it's continuing to rise today. And so, <laughs> you know, if, to, to, to say who would take care of the poor <laughs> is, is a gross misrepresentation of what is happening today. So by the same token, who would take care of marriages if the government was not involved in them, right? So what, what incentives are destroyed when the relationship involves the government? So, so the way I look at it, um, when two people get together in a private relationship, they're together because, you know, they love each other, they enjoy each other's company, they want to be together, right? And, and if any problem happens, right, they simply separate, no problems, no strings attached, right? No judges, no lawyers, <laughs> nothing, right? Um, no complications. So, to me, that is the ideal, right? And then once you involve this um, violent course of monopoly into that otherwise loving and caring relationship, um, you run the risk, as it so often happens, of, you know, resentment, you know, um, jealousy, like, 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 you know, I married you and now you're going off with someone else. How dare you? We're going to spend the rest of our lives together. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, you know, why can't you just spend the rest of your lives together without a, you know, uh, permission from the government, <laughs> as opposed to, you know, um, doing it with a contract, uh, ball and chain, you know, thing around your ankle, right? Um, and, and the other way I describe it to people is, um, um, imagine a bird in a cage, and the bird has sufficient water and food. So the cage door is open, so the bird can leave whenever it wants, right? But why would it leave if it has food and water, right? It's free. It can leave. It has food and water. So why would it leave? Why would it leave? So, right? so then same bird, same food and water, cage doors closed and locked. What's the first thing the bird thinks about is escape, right? Because freedom is more precious than food. <laughs> and I think, I think that's the primary thing, the primary reason why you hear so many relationships go immediately downhill, <laughs> you know, right after marriage. You know, the, the incidence of divorce, it's like, you know, um, most often, most of the divorces that do happen is like usually within the one, first, you know, few years, one or two years, um, because that's when people begin, to, I think they begin to realize, you know, what I actually did, <laughs> you know, I just destroyed my 
absolute freedom of association, right, with other people. And, I mean, of course, you know, married people can, you know, have, um, um, I guess, um, what do you call that, polyamory, you know, you know, um, see other people, think kind of thing. But then again, why would you get married if you didn't do that anyway, right? And, and also, you know, strictly taken by the law, um, adultery is a, I think it's a class... Class B misdemeanor, right? Punishable by uh, five hundred dollars fine or ninety days in prison. Okay, so what was previously without marriage, just you know, a uh, an idiotic move maybe by by the guy or the woman, um, and you know, either it, it eventually leads to the breakup of the relationship or they work it out, becomes through marriage a crime, <laughs> and. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've heard some people say, um, well, you know, marriage is a contract and, you know, adultery should be punished because they violated the terms of the contract, right? But, but I think the important thing to consider is that um, there must always be honesty, right? So even if you, do, you are married, you know, if you're honest with your partner and you say, you know what, I still like you, I want to see you, but I want to see other people, you know, what's wrong with that? And why, are we, why do we have to classify that as a crime? Yeah. See, so that's totally, totally. Yeah. 